Welcome to Let's Talk Motorsport, a show where a couple blokes have fun talking all things motor racing. My name is Daniel, this is Alex and Ivan, and uh, let's talk about the weekend of motorsport, boys. How are we all? Yeah, great. Yeah, hey, Ivan. Um, I'm excited. I'm keen. There's been so much motorsport. It's chaos, isn't it? We had um, one massive Sunday, not, not to mention the delays some of the races yep. had as well, um, to make the night even longer. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's a lot to talk about, so let's get straight into it, starting with Formula One, which unfortunately was the snore fest compared to all the categories we're talking about. Yeah, um, it was a long race. The Monaco Grand Prix. I think uh, Alonso summed it up. Uh, Monaco is amazing until you get to Sunday. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Literally, Saturday it, was it. It's crazy. Saturday was it, wasn't it? Well, Qualifying we'll, determined everything. Yeah, well, um, I, I like to say, uh, basically, the race can be one and done. Well, at least 90% of the race can be run and done in qualifying. And um, I think 99% of it this year was one and done in qualifying pretty, pretty much. much. Unless your name was uh, Checo Perez in the Hasses. Yeah, or Stroll. Or Stroll. Or, um, uh, no, that was it. Or Ocon. Or yeah, Ocon. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, Ocon. Yep. <laughs> so um, there was a couple of crashes. Uh, lap, and they all happened on lap one. Um, starting off with the big one. Uh, was the two Hasses. They came together and uh, knocked. Actually, they didn't come together. Kevin Magnussen um, went into the side of uh, Checo. Yeah, I think it, I, I think it's um, really, really interesting from Magnussen's point of view. You know, he felt that Perez didn't give him enough room. What's really fascinating about that crash is that you see Perez looking towards Magnussen. So he yeah. can't even say that, I didn't know he was there. Or I, you know, he just assumed that Magnussen was going to back out. And I mm-hmm. think that's uh, really, really dangerous in motorsport when you assume what someone else is going to do. I think you look both ways because you had Hulkenberg on the left as well. So either one of them was probably going to take him out. And it yeah. just happened to be Magnussen. And then Hulkenberg almost avoided the, the collision. He almost got away with it, didn't he? Yeah, unfortunately, he just tried oh. to sneak through on the left. and but, I mean, his... but let's talk about it this way. He knew he wasn't going to get in the points anyway, and he just wanted to go back to his yacht. So maybe. Yeah, well, that's what I said. I was like, yeah, he's just done a Kimi Raikkonen and thought, yeah, no, nah, I don't need a race today. I can't win. So let me just go back to the yacht and have some tequila. In saying that, maybe. I saw on Facebook, someone said, uh, Checo has now got the, one of the most expensive canoes. <laughs> yeah, that's Because <laughs> there were no wheels on his car, yeah. Yeah, if you saw the footage, that car was cooked. <laughs> yeah, it was a canoe. It really was. The shape like one as well. No wheels and... I actually thought the car split in half from the front, from the front angle. I'm like, oh my God, it's like the uh, Grosjean crash again. I thought he'd gone through a wall. Well, not really, but I thought he had a huge crash and he did, but like, it was not as bad as I thought it was. I wonder what was going through Magnuson's mind when he just sees like, you know, that car being destroyed into a million pieces, his teammates as well. Like what, what, what goes through your mind going, uh Oh, I'm in trouble here. Yeah. I've actually always wondered that. Yeah. When you, when you know, you're the one that caused the collision, Esteban Ocon, um, you know what happens after it like what what happens in, in your mind like do you think of dollar signs do you think of oh no the boss is going to be angry at me like what is, well it also depends on know. the adrenaline too you're probably not just you're just still trying to process everything. i mean if you're the racing driver what would you think uh if i was magnuson i would have thought yeah I, i've dropped the ball here like <laughs> i've dropped the ball big time and especially if i've got you know, a team sponsors and everybody's, you know, every everybody, you know, um, expects you to perform at a certain level, expects mm-hmm. you to be professional at all time and represent the brand. And especially because it's lap one of a race, you know, there's just so much more racing to go. So I'd, I'd just think, yeah, I've, I've dropped the ball. I'd go, I'd go back into the boss and just say, please don't fire me. Well, speaking of dropping the ball and please don't fire me, Esteban Ocon oh, is in yeah, yeah. heat. Which was also a lap one. Yeah. Chaos. Yeah. Um, so good segue. Just huh? before the tunnel, um, <laughs> Ocon decided to turn into he, a plane. I guess he saw an opportunity to pass his teammate Pierre Gasly, um, which you shouldn't do on that one, no. especially on your teammate. And uh, he actually got sent flying almost. It was very similar to Jensen Button in uh, Gutierrez uh, back in 2017, I think. Yep. Uh, if you remember mm. that, 
Um, it was a really ugly incident, and unfortunately, Ocon, well, not unfortunately because it's his own doing, but uh, Ocon actually didn't get to continue after that. Um, and he got actually insane that as well. He got a five place grid penalty for Canada yep. as well. And in terms of the Perez and Magnuson, um, no penalty was given there. And I think that's what you mentioned. Uh, it was a good point about Perez actually looking in the mirror. Yes. Um, that was the big turning point. And you saw it on the broadcast with, um, Anthony and Jensen, I believe. Uh, yeah, Jensen was shocked. Uh, Jensen was just looking, going, oh, actually, I've changed my mind here. I actually don't think Magnus yeah. has, I mean, 50-50 racing incident moving on. But I think what you touched on about the uh, the teammates, if mm. it was your biggest competitor in the championship and you guys are fighting for constructors points and it's Alf an Alpha Tauri and you're about to make a move like that on Alpha Tauri, fair enough. You tried you did it for the team. You did it for, you know, the good yeah. of us, you know, moving ahead in the championship. But to do it to your teammate on lap one, just as they're about to announce mm -hmm. a, a red flag. Yeah, oh, literally. That's, that's the worst part. But I'm not sure a lot of people knew that there was actually a crash. No. No. No, no. that's a good point. Because we're too busy. Fo well, the thing is, we started focusing on um, um, Carlos Sainz. He had a yeah, well, we forgot to even mention that. But yeah, that's, yeah. that's the first, See, the that's first how crazy thing that happened. It, that's how crazy it was. Yeah, well, I thought those yellow flags were for him when yeah. they were. But there was also a canoe on the track um, of Checo Perez. And, yeah, we didn't really get to see what happened until the replays and then obviously the red flag. And um, I actually think that moving forward in the race to, or on lap one, the, I reckon Oscar Piastri was going to have a go at Charles Leclerc. Oh, later that yeah. lap, he was right behind him. He was him. a bullet, wasn't he? He was on fire. He was, yeah, right behind uh, Charles Leclerc. And, um, yeah, yeah, I reckon he would have got him. Oh, if the track was raceable, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm yeah, thinking sure. to Raskas, perhaps he would have had a go. It's just so it's, dangerous. It's, yeah, it's, it's so, just dangerous. so dangerous. Mm. You know, like we've seen, you know, um, Daniel Ricciardo with like 35% less power go on to win the race yeah. and just defend for 30 laps. Um, we've seen Hamilton do it. It's you just can't overtake, and yeah. so I think what um, Ma Max Verstappen and George Russell said at the end of the race to do three pit stops or four mandatory pit stops just yeah. to make the race come alive because it's just a snooze fest every year. Every year we look forward to it, yeah. every year we're excited, and every year we're bored. Do you think I know because how historic the Monaco Grand Prix is? Do you reckon it should stay on the calendar? Given with these uh, regulations, yeah, yeah, I think it does. Yeah. It has to, because then you got other race tracks as well that have been around forever and they're still there. So, yeah. and also it is, you know, the pinnacle of. I mean, Monaco, you know, is the pinnacle of wealth, or the pinnacle of fashion, and just the history of it. Um, you saw record crowds as well. I mean, oh, you know, you packed. Could, it was packed, it was packed. and. I think they just need to do something with the pit stops just to make it a little bit more exciting. Mm. And if they can do that, then yeah, then we're going to... Well, I saw a thing that the like the 2004 race, which is very exciting, but the cars were one meter shorter than what they are now. So the cars are very, very long. And I saw them in person at the Grand Prix last year after the race yes. in the pit lane. They are very long, like ridiculously long. Yeah. And I, I think and that's heavy. the rate. Yeah, and heavy and wide. Well, they used to be wider. Mm. So couldn't even imagine the 2020, well, one 2020 race. Those are worse. Mm. Well, the thing is, because Monaco is so special because it's not less necessarily driver versus driver, it's driver versus track. Um, yeah. That's what it's mostly known for. It's, it's such a tricky circuit. Um, let's, let's have a look at the top 10 from the Grand Prix because nothing else really happened after that red flag. Um, Charles Leclerc, uh, how good, how good the win. Um, his home Grand Prix, which is he is Finally. actually the first Monegas to win the Monaco Grand Prix in 93 years. Yeah. Well, how many Monegas drivers have there even been? Like, it couldn't Not be more many. than five, surely. Not too many. I don't Not think. too many. Nah. Uh, none. Um, so that's fantastic there. And then Oscar Piastri, like we said, had a fantastic um, performance that he was strong all week. And unfortunately, he had some damage after the incident with uh, Carlos Sainz. Yes. Um, they repaired speak. that, though. Did they? Yeah, in the red flag, they repaired that. I was saying, Never yeah, mind. there you go. They so changed the side pod, yeah, and the red flag. Well, that, like I said, the race was a snore fest, so yeah, well, <laughs> that, that, that was probably the most entertaining part, exactly. But um, uh, he was sorry to interrupt you, he actually uh, had three better sectors than Charles, he just couldn't do them at once. 
So he was actually faster mm. over the whole track. Just couldn't do it in qualifying. That's just Monaco for you. Yep. Um, speaking of signs, he finished third. Then we got Lando Norris in fourth with George Russell in fifth. Verstappen uh, finished sixth. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Can you say that again? Sixth place, Max Verstappen. Oh, sounds good, doesn't it? That feels great. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> that feels great. Sounds good. Sounds, I think, just under as good as Ferrari winning. He actually said he should have brought a pillow. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Honestly, did. like he was uh, really bored. Exactly. I mean, George. I mean, they Russell, all were. George but... Russell was once again the the tire whisperer. So making seventy five laps on a medium. Yeah, but not only was he the tire whisperer on doing so well, but um, the fact that he was the he ran a whole race on mediums. Yeah, it's it's, it's, insane. It, it's insane. I wouldn't call it a race. Um, and then lastly, we got um, Hamilton, Sonoda, Albon, and Gasly. Yeah, moving on to the uh, the rest of the grid. Uh, after Pierre Gasly in 10th, they had Alonso in 11th, who was the slowest car on the track. He literally held up half the field Yeah, on purpose for Lance Stroll. So uh, Fernando Alonso definitely is a team player, but then uh, Stroll hit the wall anyway. Um, <laughs> then your Ricardo 12th, who literally saw um, Alonso's rear wing the entire race. Uh, Valtteri Bottas, actually, got a shout at him. He actually had the most overtakes. And probably the most fun, yeah. The pit stop during the race and put medium tires on and just went for it. It's really cool seeing him and actually Logan Sargent as well. Well, uh, it's Logan really Sargent. sad to see the only battle on track with Bottas and Sargent. Yeah. yeah. For fourteenth. Anyway, uh, speaking of fourteenth, uh, Lance Stroll, like I mentioned, he actually did have an advantage over Fernando Alonso and was meant to finish eleventh, but um, yeah, hit the wall and uh, got a puncture. But then he was the only driver to put on softs, and he was fast, very, very fast. And then clawed his way back to 14th. Uh, Logan Sargent and Joe Guan Yu, 15th, 16th. And that was the last of the finishes. Mm. And yeah. then, of course, like we said, we got Ocon retiring, the two Hasses, and yep. uh, Perez. So I actually counted, because I was the only one that watched the race live, I counted four overtakes and five pit stops. Wow. That is sad. Well, it's more than three, so there you go. Yeah, and the funny thing is, all those happened after what lap forty. Yeah, like, it was pretty bad. Literally, pr almost um, the whole entire results hasn't didn't change from qualifying. Yeah, almost. And I must admit, George Russell was the only reason. Not not blaming him, but his strategy was the reason why no one did pit stops because he was just behind a Norris enough to not have a free pit stop. Yeah, and was in front of M M Max to not challenge anywhere i know i know it was crazy and also you know the fact that uh, when we look at the results uh, i think signs needs to go to church and light a candle because i mean the oh, the luck the luck and the restart is just unbelievable yeah you know, he would like yeah he would have been a very 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 happy driver when he heard that it's you know we're going <laughs> back to the beginning 100 percent. that was close too because there was, was a, cl close. a close yeah. call on you know whether they made the first sector or not and oh, yeah there's a few things that um, come into play when they decide the order. But I think, you know, the most amazing thing that happened was, again, a, Mon a Monegaskan winning the Monaco Grand Prix. The emotion coming out of him with two laps to go, crying in the helmet, um, seeing his team and just, you know, thinking about his dad and everything that they went through, mm -hmm. you know, throughout his career. And he always dreamed of having this result and no one will ever be able to take it away from him. He's a Monaco Grand Prix winner. And yep. you know what was even more special? Ten years ago, Jules Bianchi scored his first points in Formula One in Monaco. Yeah. Yeah. So, his best mate. Exact godfather, Under. actually. Um, Jules was. So Oh, there you go, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, cool. So, well, let's just hope that this type of result can happen next race, which is in Canada. Probably not, because Canada's a very fast track compared see. to Monaco. But you know, I think we've had what Norris, Science and Leclerc win. Now, out of eight races, and the max is one another five. Yes, I, th I think this is a good sign. Honestly, I think that the gap between Red Bull and Ferrari McLaren has not disappeared, but very, very small. Well, I think if we look at the last time, you know, the last regulations, what we saw was an epic battle on the final year of those rules, which was, you know, the Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And so, even though this year we may not necessarily see a different world champion. I think next year between McLaren and Ferrari, I mean, I'd love to have Mercedes in that as well, but I think more realistically, McLaren and Ferrari are really going to challenge Red Bull next year in 2025. 
to close out this era of uh, you know cat- of rules, and then let's see what happens in 2026, which would be great for Lewis Hamilton. And for us, this, this is uh, the end of our show. So thanks everyone who has tuned in. If you want to Thank check you. us out, be sure to check out our YouTube and Spotify and all our socials. Just search up Let's Talk Motorsport. You should see us there with the yellow icon. And uh, hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, of course, we'll see you next week once again for some more motorsport chit chat. I'm Daniel. This is Ivan and Alex, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.